This tutorial will cover identifying command injection flaws. As previously stated in our introductory video, these vulnerabilities can sometimes be easily identified, as is the case with the code you see here. We take user input and pass it directly to the runtime exec method, a very trivially identified issue. To reiterate what we mentioned in the introductory video, it is not always as easy as this example to identify and verify command injection flaws. Take, for instance, our test.jsp page. We use a spring eval method here. In theory, we should have arbitrary code execution because, in this instance, the use of eval incorporates user-supplied data when it takes content from the parameter called test. When we say arbitrary code injection, we mean that the application will execute the code we enter into the test parameter. Let's take this from theory to actual execution. The first order of business is to use the at environment declaration to see if we can execute the spring at environment function, which should return information about our application. And you can see that it does. So this confirms our suspicion about arbitrary code injection. Now that we know we can execute code, let's try to take this a step further. We're going to try and create a file called myfile.txt. Before we do that, let's take a look at our directory listing. You can plainly see that there is no myfile.txt listed. The next step here in validating this flaw is to enter in our code, which is a call to the runtime exec method. We'll pass in an argument of touch myfile.txt. If everything worked, we should be able to see a new myfile.txt file created. When we perform another directory listing, we can see that the myfile.txt file was created successfully, verifying that we are indeed able to inject system commands into the web server running this application. You may wonder how, as attackers without access to source code, we are able to identify these issues at runtime. Many of the automation tools we use send command injection sequences in various parts of an HTTP request. If an error is returned or information sent in the web page, we know we might have a flaw and then manual analysis begins. The problem arises when an error isn't returned and we have very little information to go on. To get around this, our tools, like the one you see here called Burp Suite, have methods of detecting command injection via the use of an external server. To explain this a little further, you'll notice a collaborator server option here within Burp Suite. This means we can specify a server that will wait for unique queries. DNS lookups, pings, these will be done using a unique identifier in the domain name, which is generated by Burp. If the server sees a lookup to that unique domain name, it knows we've managed to get the system to execute our DNS lookup or ping or whatever else we're having it do. So to summarize, it is very possible for attackers to identify these flaws within a web application even without access to the source code, so relying on obfuscation will not help the situation much. You should now have an understanding of how to find these sorts of flaws in code and understand how we as attackers perform our identification of these flaws. This concludes our tutorial on identifying command injection issues.